We're going to take a look at the higher level 2014 question 10 passive house question, okay? So I've already underlined some important information, so we're just going to read through it now real quickly. Using notes and freehand sketches, discuss in detail the importance of any two of the following in the design of a passive house. Building form, indoor air quality and foundation design. Part B then, using notes and freehand sketches, discuss the importance of orientation in the siting of a passive house. Show the sun pat in your sketch. Part C then, a passive house as shown in the sketch may overheat in summer. Discuss two reasons why overheating occurs and use a notes and freehand sketches. Show two design details that would reduce the possibility of overheating. Okay, so I'm going to move on now with part A. Okay, so use a notes and freehand sketches. Discuss in detail the importance of any two of the following. So I'm going to discuss building form and foundation design. Okay. Uh, building form, so firstly, a passive house must have a compact form. So I have an example here in the diagram of two uh, potential houses. A compact form means that the house has a minimum of am amount of external wall surface possible in relation to the internal volume within the home. Ideally, it's a ratio of 0 0.7 or less, wall area to internal volume. So house A over here. The sketches show that house A has 15 units of internal space, but it has a massive external wall surface, which is a big problem as the more external wall surface you have, the more heat is lost through external wall surface. All right. House A has six internal corners and 10 external corners, as well as 22 units of wall. So then house B also has 15 units of internal space that are both the same volume, right inside space. But it has just 16 units of wall and four external corners, making it much more efficient as a passive design footprint as it is, uh, as it has a minimal wall area in relation to its internal volume. So let's have a look now. This house here has three, five, 15 internal units of space. I just drew out a grid there and drew that in. If you count these, the internal space here is also 15. So they have to both the same internal floor space and volume. Okay. But house A is at much more, it's much more sprawl. So if you count the units of wall there, each one of those, I, there's 22 units of wall and there is um, 10 external corners and six internal corners. So there's a, a lot of corners in that and they all pose potential problems with a passive house design, okay? So there's the both of the same volume, but I'm just putting in that there to highlight the compactness of one and one is house A is sprawled in relation to house B essentially okay so house B is the clear winner there okay um, both houses encompass the same area and volume of space yes house B clearly is the better option as it would make uh, as it would be easier to construct a passive standard in terms of making it airtight it would have a more basic foundation using material more economically and also easier to construct a roof and insulate to a passive standard it's much more economically viable to construct also in terms of the overall cost and also it delivers cleaner lines architecturally and gives more options in placing solar panels on the roof or solar photovoltaic panels as there is no obstruction. So for instance, if you were trying to roof house A here, you'd have valleys and hips um, all over the place and you'd limit your potential then to put something on the southern, uh, to push a solar panel on the southern elevation of the, of the home potentially, okay? It'd be also very costly. You'd have too much external wall area. There's a lot of problems with it, okay? So to make, I suggest you, you practice making a sketch of something similar to these. Now you don't have to include the grid. I've included the grid in it just to, to show you here potentially what, what I'm trying to achieve. But in the exam, you can you can come up with your own design, you know what I mean, that could potentially uh, favor yourselves, okay, within the time that you have for the whole question, which is, is 30 minutes, okay? So moving on, so to part, the second part, so foundation design. So foundation design, so uh, passive foundations must be constructed to a high standard to ensure that there is no thermal bridges present, okay? The diagram opposite shows the construction details for a concrete block foundation wrapped with external insulation, right? The foundation contains no thermal bridges as the whole foundation is wrapped with high compressive strength insulation, EPS 300, that is able to withstand all the opposed loads of the house and safely transfer the weight onto the hard core and the subsoil below it. What we're saying there is that the foundation here itself is entirely wrapped in insulation so this is a high compressive strength insulation, okay? 
and it's able to withstand the weight of the, all the loads and poles from above and transfer them w without um, collapsing down onto the hard core and onto the subsoil below it, okay? So it's specially designed to do that, okay? So that's the EPS 300 there. It's a very high compressive strength, okay? The insulation um, that the foundation sits on comes pre-molded also and sits in position before radon is installed inside it. Uh, the molded section then rebar and finally concrete so this basically comes in long sections they have to be measured and cut for the foundation and they're put in place essentially like large lego blocks okay then the radon is fitted in here okay and the rebar and they're filled with concrete okay it's like it's a concrete foundation it's more like it's it's you could also call it a ring beam that surrounds the house essentially okay so then uh, the exterior of the wall is ex insulated with 200 millimeters of insulation minimum. That's the minimum amount, okay? So then we have 150 mil concrete block to provide thermal mass on the inside. That could also be uh, a 215 or a block on the flat, okay, depending on engineer specification. Uh, the, there's an external render finished onto the insulation. Um, they do that with uh, carbon fiber and special render finish and they put it on in three or four layers also. Uh, there's internal mortar to provide the airtight barrier also. There's reinforced concrete floor. The radon barrier which runs right around here as you can see by the red line. Uh, there's sand blinding also. We have the subsoil. And then finally, we have the washed hard core that the whole thing sits on. So I suggest being able to make a very simple sketch like this as it's very useful, okay? So it's an internal block. The, this, this maintains the internal um, the mass of the building, okay? So it improves the thermal mass of the building. It keeps, stores all the heat and releases again. And the, ins the insulation then is on the exterior. So the insulation flows right around. So the entire house is wrapped in insulation. So there are no thermal bridges there. So that's a very good foundation for a passive house essentially. So please be able to sketch a detail like this, okay? Now, part B, so before I move on to part B, I want to really quickly show you this here, sun paths around Ireland, okay? So I have an example here and I'm going to fly through this really quickly. So there's sun rises in the morning in the east, okay? And at 12 midday, it's in the south and in the evening then it sets in the west, okay? So that's why every, the orient, that impacts on the orientation of new houses as they're designed, okay? Also then, we have the sun angle for summer and winter. The summer sun angle is six, approximately 60 degrees, and that's to do with our latitude in Ireland. Now, it varies as you go from north to south a little bit, and the time of the year also. So in the winter then, we have a much lower sun angle, so it's only 13 degrees. Uh, we have, that's because we have a much shorter day, and the sun might rise till maybe half eight, and it could be set again at half four, whereas in the summer, it could rise at maybe 5 a.m. and may not set till, you know, 10.30, okay? So it, much, it rises itself up much higher in the sky, okay? So that's going to help us now with this part. That's only there to help you. Passive house orientation. So the front of a passive house needs to be facing directly south in order to receive maximum solar gain and also to allow for the efficient use of solar panels or solar photovoltaic panels. So passive house orientation. Make sure, this is a sketch now you'll need to do, so make sure you put your compass in there. This is the position of your house here. So you can tell that the front of the house here, I have evacuated tubes just placed in here just to, to help us uh, state that that's the front of the house, okay? Um, so then, the, the south orientation is the optimum, okay? And we can see that even from the earlier sketch there or diagram that I showed you. So the sun rises in the morning in the east. It travels around the 12 midday. It's at its highest in the sky, always, regardless whether it's winter or summer. In the evening then, it sets in the west, okay? So this is the optimum sun angle for us to build our passive house. Now, however, if it's not possible, we, uh, we if it's not possible, we must be no more than 30 degrees from the east or west axis. So I'm going to show you what we mean by that now. So from the east or west axis, this line here, can you cannot come any more than 30 degrees in either orientation with your house, okay? So they can't, for instance, if you came down here at this angle, that would be incorrect. You can't be any more than 30 degrees off your eastern, western axis, if you understand what I mean, in order to achieve enough solar gain during the day for that house to pass and as a, as a passive house to, to actually function as a passive house should i say is that okay 
Um, so if facing directly south, um, if facing directly south is not possible, then it must be not more than 30 degrees off the easterly or western, westerly axis orientation as shown in the diagram. Uh, it is possible to build a passive house on a site where optimum orientation is not possible, but careful position of windows, that's fenestration, is required to maximize solar gain within the home. High levels of insulation are also required to account for the lack of solar gain, especially during summer months. Because you're not building it at the optimum, which is directly south, you'd have to put in higher levels of insulation to account for that. You'd have less uh, direct sunlight during the day and you wouldn't have the same solar gain. So you'd have to account for that. Is that okay? That's what we're trying to say there. So please be able to make that sketch. Now you don't need to make it. You could essentially just draw in like three rectangles, draw in your axis. You need to include your sun angle here because it's telling us, sorry, I forgot to read the question again there, but change, include the sun path in your sketch. So you could include one here, one for midday and one over here. You know, break it down as basic as you can make it and you have literally three rectangles there and that'll finish off that for you, okay? So make sure you can make this to a nice standard and make sure you understand it also, please, okay? Now, moving on, so reasons for overheating, so. Um, a passive house is shown in the sketch may overheat in summer. Discuss two reasons why overheating occurs and using notes and freehand sketches then show two design details that will reduce the possibility. So I've already done a question before, you may have seen it on reasons for overheating and this part C is going to be similar. So inadequate roof overhang will cause overheating in the summer as there are large glazed area in the, uh, in the south orientation of the house. There is no balcony or brousselet in the design which would prevent overheating in summer months when there's long exposure to the sun. Inadequate uh, natural shading provided around the home, e.g. example deciduous trees to provide shading in the summer months. Okay, inadequate ventilation system also, if the ventilation system is not like operating correctly, the internal temperature can rise causing discomfort, okay? So I'm just picking two reasons so, uh, here on my previous one if you've seen that I have three okay so I'm picking two out of the same tree so provide an overhang extended eaves to reduce the amount of solar heat gain in summertime this will ensure that the building does not receive direct sunlight during the day which will cause overheating the extended eave provides solar shading which will ensure that the building fabric does not overheat and cause discomfort for the occupants uh, the low sun angle will in winter will get full access to maximize solar gain during winter months so again this is the same this is our extended roof overhang here this is just standard again when you're making the sketch you know you can just make it up the way you want it the way it suits yourself to do it we have our summer sun here so and we have our rays and coming down and because of the extension now uh, on the eve it cannot penetrate in here on the floor which could potentially cause overheating into the house okay so that's our extended overhang is preventing that from happening so in the winter though because the sun as we saw earlier only rises up to maybe approximately 13 degrees in the sky it's very low it's sitting down very low we'll get full access here see that so we'll have maximum solar gain in the winter that's why i included that earlier to try and help you with that okay um, so extended roof overhang limits the solar gain that the building gets during the summer when there's a high sun angle, sun angle um, that ensures that the building does not overheat. Okay. Uh, however, low sun angle in winter ensures that the building receives maximum solar gain during the day. Please make sure you can make this sketch, okay? And you, you include your south elevation and we know the reason for that now also. Okay. Um, reason two, so uh, install a breeze delay, okay? Install a breeze delay above the, the windows on the southern orientation of the house. This works in the same principle as the overhang and is, is used to reduce the amount of summer sun entering the building. Okay, so I'm going to have to speed up now through this. So that's our breeze delay. We have our summer sun coming in. There's our winter sun. The same principle again. Okay, um, and it's acting the same as the overhang essentially, except it's you know a stainless steel or aluminium mechanism uh, that's bolted on above the window. They also, you can get ones that are adjustable, so you can adjust the louver vents in them, so you can let in maybe a tiny amount if you want, so to basically adjust the angles of the little louvers here. So that's another um, element you can add into it, okay? Um, but that's pretty much that question covered, so. so guys, make sure you can make those sketches, okay? That's the biggest part of that, the sketches there are a big help, okay? So uh, we'll leave it at that, so thanks guys.